Good evening, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. This is Rich again, back for your third and final video blog of the night for Friday, March 25th, 2016, around 8.12 in the evening, Berwick, Massachusetts. The sun went down, and it's going to be a cool night tonight. Tomorrow, it's going to be sunny, but in highs in the mid-40s. Some news to report before the final video blog of the night. Um, the Oakland Raiders rent at the OCO Coliseum in Oakland, California has tripled. Last year, they were paying about $925,000 a year for rent. It's tripled to $3.5 million. The Raiders are looking for a new stadium in Oakland or somewhere else like Las Vegas or San Antonio or St. Louis. Keep you posted on what's going to happen with them. And that's about it on news. It was just one little news item. Sometimes I might have a few. Sometimes I might not have. But I'm not going to be making up news because I'm not like that. And the third and final video blog subject of the night is about the former professional wrestling tag team, The Fantastics. The Fantastics were a tag team back in the 1980s and early 1990s. The most famous combination was Bobby Fulton and Tommy Rogers. They were big tag team stars in several southern wrestling territories. They never got a shot in the WWE because the WWE thought both Tommy Rogers and Bobby Fulton were too small. Background on the, how the Fantastics got started. They got started in the year 1984. And they got started in uh, CWA, which is Memphis. The original members were Terry Taylor and Bobby Fulton. Bobby Fulton was a job guy in CWA in Memphis for a while. And they were named the Fantastic Ones. And it was kind of a rip-off of the fabulous ones of like Steve Kern and Stan Lane. The fantastic ones of Bobby Fulton and Terry Taylor did not last too long in Memphis because both wrestlers left there. And both of them went to Mid-South and Bobby Fulton was t teamed with another guy by the name of Tommy Rogers who was kind of like a jobber to the stars in Mid-South Wrestling. Bill Watts put them together and they were called the Fabulous Ones. And they came out to to a lot of great music. And even to Shop Dress Man at one time. And the Fantastics were like a babyface tag team. They like wore bow ties while coming to the ring. And like um, kind of like vests. That showed their muscles, and they were a, a kind of a double team um, specialist with double drop kicks, the rocket launcher, and like a, like an atomic drop, which was awesome. The Fantastics feuded with the Midnight Express, were beautiful Bobby Eaton and Level Boy Dennis Condry. They filled in Mid South over the Mid-South Tag Team Championships. That feud went to World Class Championship Wrestling and they switched off against each other on the North America, the Americans Tag Team Championship back and forth, back and forth. They had a classic match at the David Von Erich Memorial Parade of Champions. The second one, well it was two rings, it was Bobby Fulton facing off against um, Dennis Condry and Tommy Rogers against um, Bobby Eaton and John and 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 
Hornet was tied by Lil John, who was actually a giant. It's funny. And that was a classic tag team match. It's on the WCCW Rise and Fall DVD. Afterwards, the Fantastics left World Class Championship Wrestling. They went to Memphis. They won a couple of times the Southern Tag Team Championships. But they walked on, off of the promotion in, in early 1986 because of a disputed payoff. And then they went to the UWF, which was getting, which was the rebranded Mid-South territory because Bill Watts was going national. The Fantastics had a long-running feud with the Sheep Herders, who were, who were looked Butch um, Williams, no, but Butch Miller and Luke Williams, better known as the Bushwhackers in WWE. And they had a long running feud that ended in several Bob Wyatt Cage matches and they swapped tag team titles. Then in 1987, the Fantastics go back to World Class Championship Wrestling to feud with the Rock. Genwell RPMs, Mike Davis, and some guy named Tommy. They were like, they were the, like, they were like hypnotized versions of the Rock and Roll Express. <laughs> and the Fantastics feuded with them over the world class tag team titles back and forth. They had a scaffold match, at the fourth um, annual David Von Eric Public of Champions card at Texas Stadium. Only 5,000 people saw that. And they were in world class for a few months, but then went they went to Crockett, Jim Crockett promotions, Mid Atlantic, because Jim Cornette wanted saw them and they said he said this would be a big time money feud between the Fantastics and the Midnight Express which was now beautiful Bobby Eaton and Sweet Stan Lane. And they had a long running feud over the US tag team titles. It was several months. Um, the Midnight Express beat the uh, Fantastics at the first ever Class of Champions, which was a great tag team match. Then on addition of Worldwide Wrestling, the Fantastics beat the Midnight Express. And the Midnight Express continued to chase the Fantastics over the U.S. Tag Team titles. And it culminated in a match at... The Great American Bash 1988 when Jim Cornette was put on a steel cage on top of the lane. And then, uh, and if the, the loser of the match would get 10 latches, the Midnight Express win. And then they gave 10 latches to Bob, Bobby Fulton, Tommy Rogers, but like they'd snuck, try to sneak up and they, they actually gave Cornette the 10 lashes. And then that feud continues on. Eventually, the Fantastics win back, back the U.S. Tag Team titles in a tournament. And this is about the time when, when Mid-Atlantic Wrestling on Jim Crockett Promotions was being rebranded as WCW. And they were going to... They asked the Fantastics to turn heel, but they refused. They eventually got jobbed that out, and they left WCW. And eventually... Bobby Fulton and Tommy Rogers stopped teaming for for a long time. And Bobby Fulton's um, brother Jackie took over as the of the Fantastics and they wrestled in several dying territories like the AWA and WCW and Smoky Mountain Wrestling. They actually feuded with the Heavenly Bodies and they swapped Smoky Mountain Wrestling tag team titles. And by 1994, the Fantastics were back in WCW, this time with Tommy Rogers reunited with Bobby Fulton and they were basically enhancement talent. They won a few matches on television, but they got job to every heel tag team in WCW. And then they went on the independent circuit for several years. They actually had a match against one another on in WWE on Raw in, in June of 1997. And the Fantastics made on and off um, in independent appearances into 2007 
when Tommy Lodges retired. In June of 2015, Tommy Lodges passed away, which was very sad. And the Fantastics were a great, great tag team, but they never held either the NWA slash WCW World Tag Team titles or the WWE titles because they never had a run in the worldwide leader of sports entertainment, the WWE. And they tried to get into the WWE in the 1980s, but they weren't interested. The WWE was, was not interested because they were too small, and if they went to the WWE, they would be jobbers to the stars, or they would get some ridiculous tag team gimmick that wouldn't fly. And with, like, them not getting the NWA World Tag Team titles or WCW, if they really stuck around and maybe turned heel, then they would have probably got considered winning the WCW World Tag Team titles, but they didn't want to, and that's about, that was it for them in, during WCW in 1989, and they were from the City of Angels, and that's about it on that. I will be back tomorrow, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter with only two video blogs. First one will be about the top 10 list of the greatest sports um, sideline reporters of all time. And the second video blog will be about the surprise teams in the National Hockey League this season because it's only two weeks left of the season. And... And Sunday will probably be two as well because it's a holiday weekend. And I'm working hard on the next big project that I'm going to be doing will be the top 100, 100 sitcoms of all time. It's going to be real interesting. And this is the final night for taking questions. Ask Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Google+. Plus. Private message to questions will be answered. Keep calm, everybody. I'm a Judy Button guy. Molly Rosenblatt, the WCCO, rocks and has nice legs. Elizabeth Hatso, so stunning, she's best. Amy Swenzies, awesome. Julie Gower of of Fox 25 is the best. And that and Barbara Gibbs of ABC 11 has that sweet southern accent. And of course, she has nice legs. And in the words of Sean Lucha, get out. See you later.